Mark from Vortec Pro. Video number four, crankshaft prep in our 454 budget pump gas 620 horsepower build. We have four crankshafts here. This crankshaft is a GM four inch stroke 7416 forging. This crank is a 039 cast GM 454 crank four inch stroke. This is the crankshaft we're going to use in our engine build. It's already been prepped. I'll get into what we've done to it here in a minute. This is a Virgin 4 inch stroke 039 cast 454 crank. This is an aftermarket 4 inch stroke crank. Easy way to tell a 454 forge crank is by the parting line. See how wide it is right there? Now here is a cast 454 crank. See the parting line is real narrow. It's, it's, it's real thin compared to real thick right here. Okay, so this is our 039 cast 454 crank that we selected for our build. And I'm going to tell you the process that we go through when we prep this crank. First, this crank would be hot tanked. After it's hot tanked, it would be steel abraded. After it's steel abraded, we would wet mag it. And after it's wet mag, we would demagnetize it. At that point, if everything checks out all right, we would tap all the holes. We would bull nose the crank, which you can see right here, oh, or right, right there. Can you get in on that, Tommy? We would bull nose the counterweights. We would grind the counterweights down, which I'll show you what I'm talking about there. Here we'll take our factory 454 crank. You got that, Tommy? Mm -hmm. See that? As you can see, we've cut a half an inch total off this crank and a quarter inch off each side. Okay, we bullnose the crank because we were trying to reduce windage and obviously cutting the counterweights down, we're trying to reduce rotating weight. Now this is important because, you know, we're going to put this in a foot brake automatic car and the more weight you take out of the bottom end, the faster the car accelerates through low gear. Now, if you can pan down and look at this counterweight compared to this factory untouched counterweight, you can see how much smaller this counterweight is. So after, after we've got the counterweights cut down and the bull nosing done, we're going to grind the crank. We use a 564 so radius when we, when we grind the crank because that way we can use a, use a uh, king type bearing and don't, we don't need to use an H series bearing, which you really don't want to use on a cast crank anyway. We'll index the crank 90 degrees to each throw. We'll set the stroke exactly to four inch. And then on our clearance, we built a lot of these motors of this type, so we kind of know roughly where the crank needs to be ground in the spec to make the clearance that we want. We're shooting for 28 ten thousandths on the mains and 25 ten thousandths on the rods. And when we're assembling the motor, we'll show you how to get that almost exact. Okay, right here we're getting ready to check the run out. Uh, why this is important, especially uh, you guys using aftermarket cranks, uh, generally they do have quite a bit of run out and we're going to show you what we're talking about with run out. Uh, we've got the crankshaft in the V blocks and the balancer. We're checking the run out with the dial indicator and the first place we would start is on the seal surface back here. This would be our first, first reference point that we would check. From there we'd go to number four, then we'd go to number three, then number two, and then we'd go to the crankshaft snout. Okay, so if you can zoom in here, Tommy, we'll show the run out on this. This one's got a few tenths run out, which which will be okay. Can you get that? Do you have it? Okay. So pretty good. Pretty good. We'll run that. Number four, 
Number four usually is a big problem with a lot of cranks. So here, we'll go down here and get on number three. Number three's got about five tenths. Uh, we can run that, five tenths would be acceptable. Uh, when it gets over that, I don't, I like to straighten the crank. Number two, we're running a few tenths on number two. Now let's come on down here and check the check the snout. Ooh, just cleared. We're running about a half on the snout. Uh, they say one thousands is allowable. I wouldn't. I try to get it the best you can. If, it, if it's got more than half a half a thousand, so I would uh, try to straighten it. And while it's up in here in the in the V blocks, you can kind of see where we've we've cut the counterweight down here. Uh, we've taken a half inch total in diameter off this counterweight but a quarter inch from the center line to here is off of it. And you can see it's cut from here to here and right here to here. Okay, I wanna point out the fact that this, again, is an 039 cast crank, you can, which is denoted by this thin parting line. This was a forged steel crank. It'd have a parting line, it'd be about 7 sixteenths of an inch wide right here instead of this narrow line. And you can see where we bullnose the crank right here. We use a four and a half inch angle grinder with a 40 grit flat disc to do that. Uh, we don't get too carried away with it. Uh, we just want to get that rounded for oil control. And uh, again, if you could get into the radiuses on here, this is a 564 radius that we put on here, which works with a works with a uh, king bearing. You don't have to use an H-series bearing. And then something that we'll get into, get into when we're ba actually balancing the crank. We'll end, up, we'll end up welding these factory balance holes up. Did you get that? These will end up getting welded up because what, what our end goal is here is not to take weight out of this counterweight, but to take it out of the take it out of the external part of the balance on the harmonic balancer. As you can see, we want to take weight out of here, not out of here. That's going to help us take pressure off the factory snout. You know, that's going to give us some reliability with this cast crank. This is a stroke checker. This is what we use to check the stroke on the cranks. If you have aftermarket cranks, you probably should get one of these so you can see exactly what you have and I'll demonstrate how it works. I'm going to run this across the high, the high spot of the throw. I'm going to zero it so we found the high spot of the throw from here to here. We're going to turn the crank 180 degrees we're going to come down here and find the high spot on the back side of the throw. Can you see those numbers, Tommy? Mm -hmm. See, we're inching up. There's four inch. I'll watch you come down. So, we have four inch stroke exactly right here on this row. So now we know, now we know how we're gonna set our deck height up. So those are the processes we go through on setting a crank up for one of these budget 454s. Stay tuned for part five.